Good evening. As far as announcements, uh, just remember Stevie Sweat. Uh, he's just he's resting. Just pray for you know healing for him. Pray for Donna and the family. But uh, other than that, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord God, we thank you, Lord, for your blessings of life, Lord. And God, well, again, we're thankful that we can come to your house tonight, Lord. I know we're few in number, Lord, but. Tell us where there's two or more gathered together, Lord, you'll be with us. And, Lord, we just pray for the, the singing tonight, Lord. We, we pray for Brother Stevie as he brings the message tonight. Lord, just help him remember the things, Lord, that he studied, Lord, and just be with him as he, as he speaks. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And be with Brother Joe as he travels. If we're able, let's stand and sing Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Sing loud. Amen. You may be seated. Jesus, Jesus, pray. 
trust Him more. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care and bids me at my Father's home make all my wants and wishes known in seasons of soul has often found relief and of escape the tempter's stare by thy return sweet hour of prayer sweet hour of prayer sweet hour of prayer I weep Shall my petition bear to him whose truth and faithfulness engage the waiting soul to bless? And since he bids me seek his face, believe his word. Got a video is hit. Jesus Christ.
Well, good evening. You got me again. <laughs> Brother Joe's always told me, he said, I always have a sermon in your pocket just in case I can't make it. Well, I ain't going to say I really had one, but, um, you know, this morning um, he preached, he'd been preaching Sunday mornings out of the book of John, and he was going to do Esther tonight. Well, I'm not going to do Esther. Um, I can't pronounce all them names in the Old Testament good enough to do any of them hardly, but um, I'm going to stay in the book of 1 John tonight. And, um, you know, John, uh, John wrote the gospel, and he wrote three epistles, and then he wrote the book of Revelation. Now, um, this is the, the first epistle that John wrote in uh, John, 1 John. And uh, it's really not written as a letter to the churches. Most of the epistles is written as letters to the churches, but it's written as a sermon, you know. And um, when you look at the first, let me go back. Um, usually, you know, these epistles say it, it's a book written by somebody and it's to somebody. Um, now I've got to go forward. Um, And most of them was written by Paul. Um, what do I want to do? Yeah, like in the Corinthians, it starts out, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God and, and Timothy, our brother, unto the church of God, which is the Corinth. See, it clearly states that's a letter written to a particular church. But the first epistle of John um, isn't written that way. In chapter 1, it starts out, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands uh, have handled the word of life. For the life was manifest, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show uh, that you, unto you that, that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. That eternal life we know is Jesus Christ. This morning, our... Uh, a Sunday school lesson, you know, if you weren't in, in Sunday school, um, talked about, can anybody remember what it talked about? What was it about? It was about a new covenant, the new covenant of Jesus Christ. The covenant that would last, there'll be another covenant. That was the last one. It'll be, it's an eternal covenant uh, that we studied this morning. But um, in in the um, in the book of First uh, John, we start. We lit, read the first chapter, and it talks about God being the light, the light of this world. And in the middle of it, it talks about God being love. Well, you know, what's one of the um, what is the the most important commandment is that we love one another. Um, and but we're going to be talking tonight. I got you to this point as a preamble to um, 1 John chapter 5, because that's where our text is going to be this morning. And uh, if you don't mind staying for the reading of God's Word, I'm going to try to do it as good as Joe does. At work, he can't do it good as I can here. I can't do it good as he does, but I'm going to try. Um, <laughs> um, Chapter 5 said, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and every one that loveth him that beget loveth him also that is begotten of him. Uh, by this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. For whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he is that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but uh, by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. Uh, for there are three that bear witness record in heaven the father the word we know is also the son and the holy ghost and these are all one 
Uh, and there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God hath given us, given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things I have written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of God, the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he heareth us, us whatsoever we ask we know that he we have the petitions that we desire of him if any man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death he shall ask and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death there is a sin unto death I do not say that he shall pray for it all in righteousness is sin and there is a sin not unto death we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. And we know that the Son of God has come, and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God, the eternal life. Little children, keep yourself from idols. Come be seated. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, again, we just so thankful, Lord, that we can be here tonight. Father, we just so thank for your word, Father. And I just pray, Lord, that you'd help me tonight, Lord, to, to as we look at the, this chapter in, in 1 John, Father, that you'd be pleased, Father, Lord, that, that we could understand uh, what John was preaching to us, what he was telling us. Father, we want to pray for those that's not here. Father, we want to pray for the world around us. Father, we want to pray, Lord, that you would make us more like Jesus every day. Again, God, we just pray, Lord, that you forgive us where we fail you, Father, and, and help us to, to lean on you and to be more and more like you. Again, God, we're just so thankful for the salvation that you promised us in this passage, Father. Lord, And we, we ha that is our faith. Our faith is in Jesus Christ. And in his name we pray. Amen. Now, um, John was in prison when he wrote these epistles. Um, it's believed that the gospel, of course, he wrote the gospel first. And these epistles was probably, well, John died some, around 100 A.D. He was the last of the disciples to pass away uh, or to die. And uh, remember, he was the disciple that Jesus loved. Um, and he lived a long life. And I, I, I believe part of what he says in, in this sort of depicts his life. Um, but he says in verse 1, he said, Whosoever believeth, uh, like I said, this whole, whole uh, chapter talks about God being life, us having an everlasting life, eternal life. Um, whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Um, and everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. Uh, you know, before we can say we're a Christian, we have to be born again. And that's what he's saying here, that if we believe in Jesus Christ and trust him, that we are born again. Um, Jesus comes and lives inside of us. We, this new covenant that God made um, with his people that he uh, uh, had Jeremiah to tell the people about 600 years before Christ about the new covenant. And Jesus is the new covenant that he would come and indwell, live in us, that he would be that everlasting life. And it's, you know, people think about losing their salvation. And, and I'm sort of getting ahead of myself. That's part of the last part of this uh, 
this chapter we're talking about. But, um, you know, you can't lose your salvation. If you've never had it, then you've never had it. But if you've had it, you'll never lose it. Um, I can remember um, one time in in, uh, in Scriven, we had a revival, and I was I was the counselor in that revival, and a young man came to me. He was 18, a senior in high school. He came to me, and, and he told me, he said, you know, I gave my life to Christ. I, I, I joined the church and everything whenever I was young. And uh, he said, but I don't feel like I'm saved. And I had to sit down and, and counsel him. I said, well, you know, uh, church membership doesn't get you saved. Accepting Christ as your Savior, knowing that Christ is your Lord, and, and, you know, that's what gets you saved. And I said, if you believe that, then I don't think you've lost your salvation. But if you, um, you know, hadn't believed that, then it's possible you know, so we're going to go through the salvation prayer again. And I sat down and we prayed the prayer of salvation. He accepted Christ in his heart again. Now, when I was young, you hear all kinds of different stuff. I remember people telling me, well, if you get saved one time, it's a sin to get saved again. <laughs> well, in the context of that, it's wrong. But in one sense, if you get saved the first kind of time, you don't need to get saved again. <laughs> Um, so if you feel like you do, there's probably some sin in there. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. But um, anyhow, uh, like I said, I kind of got ahead of myself there a little bit. But in you know, in 1 John 2, 29, it says, If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone that doth righteousness is born of him, that we're born again. And we, you know, Jesus told Nicodemus, we must be born again to, in, to enter the kingdom of heaven. Uh, that is the requirement. Um, and in verse 2 he says by this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments you know that's the evidence of our salvation that we love the children of God that we love one another like Jesus had taught, had taught us uh, and by that we love God and if we love him we'll do what he tells us to um but we're a lot of like little children sometimes. We may love our parents, but a lot of times we don't want to do what they tell us to. But ultimately, when it comes down to us, they usually come to us heartbroken after they've done something and got caught. Um, and, uh, of course, I'm talking about my own experiences. Um, and, uh, you know, you know that they love us. Um, and we love God. Now, Jesus... Jesus' commandments, he said here, by this we know we'll keep his commandments. Now, when we talk about the commandments, of course, you know, we all know about the Ten Commandments. But what is the commandments he's talking about here? When Jesus was here, he didn't just give them Ten Commandments. He gave us 25 or so commandments. And uh, I, I'm, I didn't write all these down, but, you know, the, uh, just uh, examples are for us to rejoice evermore. We're to rejoice um, pray without ceasing, quench not the spirit. We're to love our enemies, and we're to love one another uh, as Jesus has loved us. Um, like I said, he gave us a lot of commandments just in the way he lived and the way he taught. Um, and then it says, For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Uh, that word grievous by the Schofield uh, Dictionary uh, talks about being burdensome but you know um, when we look around us now and you see the political environment and you see all these democratic big cities and you see people moving from those cities uh, coming different places getting away from them it reminds me of something I heard J. Vernon McGee talk, uh, tell he told he said they was this town west back in the western days he said and families would come through with their covered wagons and said so there was a storekeeper there at the general store that they'd usually stop in there to get supplies, and they were looking for somewhere to settle. He said there was a man sitting out front listening, and one day a wagon come up, and a man got out and had his family there, and he said, well, you know, what kind of town is this? He said the storekeeper looked at him and said, well, what kind of town did you come from? He said, well, when I come back from back east, it's a small town. Everybody loved one another. Everybody got along well and got along good. And... Uh, um, you know, we just wanted to move out west. We're 
kind of looking for the same, wanted to move out west. He said, well, this town's just like you described. So the man went on down the street, and, you know, looking for a place and uh, decided he'd try to, to stay there. Well, in a short time later, another wagon come through, and the uh, man gets out the wagon, and he goes to the storekeep, and he says, you know, um, I'm looking for a place. He said, what kind of town is this? And the storekeeper looked at him and said, well, what kind of town did you come from? He said, man, the place I come from, the people were mean. It was not a good place. He said, um, like I said, the people were mean, and I'm looking to get away from it. Um, the man looked at, the storekeeper looked at the man and said, well, you know, this place is a lot like that. The people are mean and, and, <laughs> and, uh, and, and anything but... Um, the man sitting there watching this, uh, that, now that, that man, he just left town. He just went on through and left town. And the man asked the storekeeper, he said, now you give two different stories about this town. He said, why did you do that? And he says, well, um, any town is the same kind of town. And most people come from it's the same kind of people. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, let's think about that when all these people's coming in from other, these other cities. Uh, you know, I just hope they don't bring their town with them. Uh, don't let them spoil our town. But anyhow, um, you know, Jesus' commandments are not grievous. Um, love one another. Uh, you know, the law, the Israelites found the law to be grievous. They couldn't keep the law. Um, and if you look around us now, there's concern about, you know, there's concern about um, the spiritual situation in our country. Well, it's true. Our, our country has gotten away from God. Um, I was listening to a couple of Adrian Rogers, and he, he reverts it back to uh, the days of the judges, the days of Gideon. See, Israelite had fell out, uh, had, had sinned against God, and God gave them over to the Midian, uh, Midianites and and they would come in and take their stuff. That's where they found Gideon hiding in the threshing floor. Uh, I mean, the wine press, threshing wheat. He was out of place. And uh, God called him because he had heard the prayers of the people. And, you know, I'm not going to get into that story. I, I started to, like I said, I started to talk about that tonight. But then there was too many names I couldn't pronounce. Uh, <laughs> but I'm going to hit on that because... Our times, you know, we, we think of it, and I, I remember um, different pastors coming up, and they were just grieving because the good old days are gone. It's not like it was. Well, it never has been. Even in that day, it wasn't like it was. It was different. The people uh, were, were grieving because they had been, they had been given over to the uh, Midianites. But, you know, it reminds me of another story I heard Adrian Rogers say. He said a well, little boy went to school one day, had his friend, opened up his lunchbox at lunch, and looks in and says, peanut butter sandwich. Eats his meal. The next day, goes to the lunch cafeteria, opens up a lunch but he says, another peanut butter sandwich. Next day, same thing. He goes in and opens up his lunch box and he says, another peanut butter sandwich. And the other little his friend looks at him and says, Why don't you tell your mama not to fix you any more peanut butter sandwich? And the little boy looks at him and says, Hey, don't be talking about my mama. I made these. <laughs> so <laughs> you know that's kind of the story of us. <laughs> A lot of times, you know, we put ourselves in the position we're at. And that's what happened with the Israelites. Um, with, uh, then, God, then God called Gideon. And uh, that's, another, that's, another, uh, that's another sermon. But anyhow, um, he says then, So for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. You know, who do we know that is born of God? Now, we're born again. And in doing that and being born again, we are the children of God by adoption. But Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of God. He was the one, one born of God. And He is the one that overcome the world. Um, so He is, in verse 5 it says, He, it, who is 
he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. So he's passing on his right, that victory that he's won, he's shared with us because we believe in him. Um, he said, this is he that came by blood, water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. Now, um, the truth is hard to come by these days. When you look on the in the news media, I don't care which station you look at, everything has a bias to it. And if it's biased one way or another, it's not truth. Um, some are more biased than others. Um, you know, we see a, a, a plague over our land. But, you know, as Christians, there again, like, like I said this morning, we're not to be dismayed. Um, you know, thank God that he did what he did for Donald Trump yesterday. Because, you know, in, in one sense, we, we're expecting Donald Trump to win the presidency and to change some of the things in this world that's anti-Christ or anti-God. That's, that's our hope as Christians. And we don't want to see that. Um, we don't want to, I mean, we want to see that happen. And, and uh, that was just a sign, I think, yesterday that God agrees. <laughs> you know, I believe God saved his life. Um, but anyhow, so this, like I said, the spirit is truth. He said, for there is three that bear witness in the heaven. And here we talk about the Father and the Word and the Holy Ghost. These are three these three are one. And we know we believe in the Trinity, and, but the Trinity is one God. We believe in God. Um, he said, if we receive uh, the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. Um, you know, we, if we can believe what men tell us, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God which he had testified of his Son. And we're talking about his word. Uh, his word from, from all the way back testifies about God redeeming man. And the vehicle to do that, the only vehicle to do that, is Christ Jesus. And so, you know, um, this is a love story from the beginning to the end. Now, in this love story, there's a lot of wicked people. You see a lot of wicked things. And that's why God is, I say he's endured it. Um, he's endured me that I can change my heart, can change my life, that I can accept Jesus and, and forget the external things around me. I can learn from the internal, uh, like the Spirit of God that He's given us uh, to be with us, or the Holy Ghost. And He says that uh, um, He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in Himself. Jesus comes to live in our heart. Um, and He is in us. And you know, we have two natures. We have a, uh, that nature of God, and we have our human nature. And we're always going to have that sin nature. And that's what confuses us up so many times that, you know, if we sin, we, you know, just because we sin don't mean God's going to kill us. It ain't really, God ain't sitting there waiting, watching for us to sin. You know what God's sitting there waiting for? He's watch, waiting for us to do right. He's wanting to see Jesus in us. That's what he's waiting for. Uh, that's what he's looking for in us. Uh, that he can see Jesus in us. That we can be more and more like his son. Um, but a lot of people believe that, you know, um, one sin will, will send you to hell. Um, my <laughs> my father-in-law used to tell me I'd go to hell for lying. <laughs> um, but the truth is, I'll go to hell for not believing in Christ. Now, if I believe in Christ, I shouldn't lie. But I have a sin nature, and occasionally I may tell one. Um, I can call it a fib, I can call it a story or whatever, but, you know, technically, um, sometimes we don't want to be technical. But technically, Jesus saved us. He saved us from ourselves, our sins, our past, present, and future. And, he, and then he says... Um, let me see. He that believeth the Son hath witnessed himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. Um, that is the record um, that God has given us in the New Testament. 
uh, and the record he gave us in the Old Testament. Because in the Old Testament, he told us, he told us about Jesus. It all led up to Jesus uh, doing what um, John the Baptist uh, told his followers. He said, here comes the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And that's what Jesus done for us. Up to then, they had a sacrimony, external uh, ceremony that would cover their sin, that, that God would allow them to cover their sin for a year uh, until the next time that they needed to make a sacrifice. But Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice because he took away our sins. No more do we have to have a sacrificial lamb at the altar. Um, he said, these things have I written to you that, that you believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know, that you may know. Uh, a lot of people think, says, well, you can't really know that you're saved. But this is what he's saying. He says, you can know. He said, these things have I written unto you that, that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know. If you believe on the Son of God, then you may know. Uh, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Now, that word confidence, where do we get our confidence from? Achieving, right? Well, I, that's one way. When we achieve something, we have confidence that we can do it. Um, and I, I'm going to use Levi as an example. When he was a baby, there's something that he, you know, when, when babies are babies, you try to do everything for them sometimes. But as they start growing, they want to do something on their own. And I can remember one time Levi stopped me from doing something and he done it himself. And he just looks at me now. His, his, then he didn't call me granddaddy, he called me day. So he looks at me and he said, me day, me. You know, I done this. He had confidence in himself that he done that. I just embarrassed you. But anyhow, that's the truth. That, that really happened. And that's an example of what we, this confidence that we have. We have confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything, have you asked anything of God? I know y'all have. I know y'all prayed supplication prayers for me when I was in the hospital. And here I am, you know. Y'all have asked something of God and he produced. He, I'm going to tell you, I'm only here by the grace of God. Um, and Brother Joe told me when I got out, he said, you know, you don't know how close you came to dying. And he's, he's right. At that time, I didn't know how close I came to dying. But after hearing some of the reports in all those days, I realized I was real close to dying. Uh, you know, the first relevance I had of that whenever I woke up uh, from the coma is Teresa asking the doctor if I was out of the woods, and the doctor told her no. And see, I didn't even know I was in the woods. <laughs> uh, so anyhow, you know, we don't never know when our last breath is going to be. But we can have that assurance because we, he says here um, that if we believe on, uh, excuse me, that if we ask anything according to his will. Now, um, I used to want different things, but... There's a lot of things I asked for that wasn't in God's will. I know because I didn't get them. Or he just flat out said no. Um, <laughs> you know, I can still believe that uh, he had my best interest at heart, even if I didn't get what I wanted. Uh, kids, you, you hear that. Um, but uh, he said that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears, hears us. And says, if we know that he hears us whatsoever we ask, we know that we have petitions that we desire of him. If any man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. You know, if we see a, a brother sin, he's saying here that we're to pray for him. Uh, we're, you know, we're to help him and help God, but we're to pray for him because God, God is our conscience. He's our actual, he's our, our guide. And then he talks about a sin unto death. Now, a lot of people believe that, you know, if you sin, there is a sin unto death, but we're not to ask for that sin. Um, you know, it, it's, if you're here on this earth, God's got a purpose for you. And you're, you're expedient for the Lord to use. But at some point in your life, you can be a Christian. But if you turn away from God enough, there is a sin unto death that God, it's not expedient for him to let you live anymore. You know, 
that's sort of hard to explain. But, you know, from God's perspective, you know, I believe it's true. I believe it's truth. I believe what John's saying is truth. He said, um, there is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. All unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. Um, he said, we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one uh, touches him not. Um, you know, Jesus Christ was born of God. And he saw no sin. He was tempted. He went to the wilderness, and Satan tempted him. Um, but he sinneth not. Now, we have that same uh, um, victory that he won over Satan in us. He, he impugned that to us. He give that to us because we're his children. Uh, it's an inheritance that he's given us. Um, he said, and we know that we are of God and the whole, and the whole world life in wickedness. Um, and we know that the Son of God has come and have given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true, even the Son, Jesus Christ, that is the true God and eternal life. Uh, like I said, in this chapter of John, he talks about the life that he's given us, the eternal life. We know God is the eternal being. He was here. He's our creator and he's our sustainer. He has withstood time. Time doesn't mean nothing to him. He's, he, time is irrelevant to God. He has seen our past. He was, uh, what was it, uh, You know, it, somebody said it was like a parade. He was there for that. He saw the beginning and he saw the end at the same time and everything in the middle. That's our life. And he already knows what's in our life. He knows um, everything we, about us. So in light of that, you know, we can trust God. Even in times of dismay. Even in times that our country, it seems like, um, you know, it's not the way it used to be. Our churches, some of our churches have declined. But listen here, God's still alive. God's still working. And God's called his people to share his gospel with the world, that they can have life. This life that we have is something that we can give away and never lose. Um, and that's just exciting to me. There's a world out there that needs to hear about Jesus, and we need to be here to tell them about Jesus. Um, and he said, little children, his, his last statement in this, and like I said, it's a sermon from John. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. And I want to remind you that John was pastor at Ephesus. Paul started the church, but John was the pastor there and was actually buried there after he passed. Um, God has a purpose for us. And that's my message. Um, Brother Kurt, you mind dismissing us? Brother Kurt, you mind dismissing us?